Hi everybody, Richard Trojans here again, Artificial Lawyer TV. Today we're doing a very special uh, product walkthrough. This time we're looking at Sally, which is the standards organization. Um, it's a bit different to what we've looked at before. And to tell us a bit more about it are Damien, Kelly and Jim. Hi everybody. Hello. Hi Richard. Um, before we get into the product, if we can call it that, um, Damien, do you want to just start off just a, good, just a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm Damien Real, lawyer since 2002, coder since 1985. Uh, my day job is with Fastcase, uh, where I have 500 million documents that I parse through and uh, do magic with. Fantastic. Thanks, Kelly. I'm the Director of Client Relations and Innovation at Goulston and & Stores and the Director of Member Engagement for the Sally Alliance. We um, were one of the first reference implementations of the Legal Matter Specification Standard version 1.0. Fantastic. And Jim. Jim Hannigan, Director of Legal Project Management, Coblitz, Patch, Duffy, and Bass. Uh, my day job is about legal project management, implementation, budgeting, pricing, innovation, all kinds of things for my firm. And I've been involved with Sally for about five, six years. Um, and uh, very excited to be here. Thank you. Fantastic. So let, let's get into this. But before we get into too much detail, let's just give the audience a little bit of an intro. Uh, what actually is Sally, which is uh, a, an acronym, S-A-L-I, and if you could just explain that. Sure. Sally stands for Standards of Management for the Legal Industry. We were formed officially about three years ago. We're a nonprofit uh, organization, which is intended to be a general purpose standards body for, for the legal industry. But our initial um, standard that we rolled out in early 2020 was called the LMSS, the Legal Matter Specification Standard, which is about defining a matter, uh, the core aspects of a legal matter um, from a neutral perspective, meaning either regardless of your position, the data is the same. So what are the key components that help um, understand uh, the, con the composition and the fabric of a matter? Um, the, the, the group is uh, intended to be neutral, meaning that we serve all stakeholders equally. We have um, clients, law firms, uh, uh, software vendors, of course, and all have equal uh, uh, say in what we advance and what we work on. So we wanna make us that the industry adopts what we do. So that's the purpose of that. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's the LMSS was released early 2020, and we've seen amazing uptake, I think I would say, in terms of the acceptance of it. And uh, it, it's, we're, and we'll, as we'll explain, <clears throat> the 2.0 that's coming out is, is growing it in ways that the, the initial did not include. So, um, Damien, you want to take it from here? Sure. Well, and then one thing. Well, oh, actually, Daniel, just before you, you you guys kick off, I will just disappear myself. And if you just want to give us a walkthrough, as it were, of, of how it works and so forth and the new version, and then I'll come back to you uh, in a little bit. But otherwise, uh, you guys, please take it away. Great, thanks. And one thing to add to, uh, to Jim's uh, very good description is we are also a nonprofit. Uh, that is, each of us, Kelly, Jim, and I, and everyone else involved, Sally, are volunteers. And this is not a for-profit venture. This is really our, uh, we're donating our time and energy to be able to make sure that these standards work for everyone. So that's an important note. Uh, we're not selling anything. Uh, we are free and open. Um, so. We have the stakeholders that Jim mentioned are clients, law firms, and vendors. And uh, clients want to figure out who's a good matter fit. Uh, law firms want to say that we are a good matter fit. And we here are the analytics. And of course, vendors like the fast case doc alarm that I work for answer questions. So each of these questions is something that law firms and clients care about. And, uh, and everything in blue is a Sally data point that we collect and be able to find out. Um, so as part of that, um, you can imagine that your law firm or your, uh, your in-house counsel has a list of matters. Uh, that is a shoplifting matter has a Sally tag. That is a criminal matter that is a dispute. Uh, and so each of these matters has a Sally tag to it. Also, each document within that matter, uh, this is a merger and acquisition agreement. This is a transactional matter that is a merger and acquisition. So, uh, and then for each timekeeping, uh, you'll, you can imagine that this is an intellectual property patent case that is a dispute, that is in uh, litigation. So for any particular matter, there is a Sally tag to be able to classify those matters. With Sally 2.0 versus LMSS 2.0, we've gone even farther to so that, say that directors and officers is a thing that is mentioned in the merger and acquisition agreement. That is also in a version two tag, along with all these other things that you can tag up. This document has all of these attributes to be able to run queries to find, show me all the documents with these attributes. Show me all the timekeeping that has depositions that involves uh, conclusions of law or summary judgment. Um, each of those is also a Sally tag. So you can think about this as almost parsing the DNA of the law to be able to figure out what matters, both substantively, uh, as far as win or lose or getting your goals, as well as pricing. How much do things cost? Um, each of the, the things that we're tagging here in Sally 
does that. So when you think about uh, areas of law, patent is an area of law that Sally tracks. Uh, we separate areas of law from services. What kind of matter? Is it a patent litigation or is it a patent transaction where I'm filing a patent? Uh, we say this is a dispute. So the areas of law is separated from service. For what industry? Who is my client? And you can imagine computers and high tech is one of those. And then what is, uh, role is my client? My client could be a defendant. So each of the things we just went through is a Sally tag. It's a patent dispute that involves computer and high tech defendants. Um, so you can run queries across your data set. Um, another big aspect of uh, Sally is that we uh, are working on an API to have everyone speak literally the same language. So if a banking law is being collected by clients and firms and vendors, current state is that everyone is calling banking law a different thing and have a different unique identifier for those things. Sally, we'd like to be able to have everyone use the same word, bank, uh, to be able to communicate amongst clients and law firms and vendors, to be able to interact with data in a normalized, standardized way. And of course, there's not just one vendor, but there are many vendors that all need to communicate to each other as well. So if ever all the vendors and all the clients and all the law firms and uh, everyone is speaking the same language, that increases data flow and normalization of data across those things. So one of the benefits of the structure of version 2.0 is we are using uh, what's called a graph database. And so uh, you can imagine that uh, a type of labor and employment law is immigration. So there's a Sally tag for immigration. Immigration is also a personal and family law matter. So within the Sally data set, uh, there is one thing called immigration. There's not labor and employment immigration versus personal and family immigration. There's one thing called immigration that is a type of labor and employment, also a type of personal and family law. So for that reason, uh, this, we're very smart in the way that we map things out. Um, a third thing that's really important is that uh, we have multiple, if you ask three lawyers what kind of law negligent misrepresentation is, lawyer number one says, well, that's a misrepresentation claim, obviously, and lawyer number would, would be right. But lawyer number two would say, well, it is kind of that, but it's also a negligence claim, and they would be right. Uh, and lawyer three would say, well, it's kind of both of those things, but it's also a defamation claim. You're saying something false about my client. And lawyer three would be right. So different taxonomies have kind of struggled with this. Which is it? Um, we say, yes, lawyers one, two, and three are all correct. Uh, there, and so we are able to make links to all of those things. So with that, uh, there's all sorts of great uh, things that now I'm going to jump into actually LMSS itself. Uh, this is within Web Protege, which is a Stanford project. Um, and so within this, you're able to see we have 9,500 nodes. Uh, it looks very simple here, but it's incredibly powerful, including who am I? Am I a plaintiff? Am I a defendant? Am I a, uh, am I a lessor? Am I a lessee? Am I an acquiring company? Am I a acquired company? So within each of these is uh, being able to say, OK, I'm a broker uh, for this matter. And then you can see here that there's a uh, beautiful graph that's created that a broker is related to transactional practice, also related to broker dealer law that relates to securities, commodities, and financials industry in areas of law. So within this, you can see that we've created this beautiful connection amongst all of the matters that relate to broker dealer relationships. Also important here is that uh, we have definitions of as far as who, uh, what this is. And even most importantly uh, for our users is this unique identifier. This is the data that if you uh, run an API call, which we're building right now, if you're a client that says, show me all the matters that relate to brokers, you would send this to the vendor or to your client or to whomever else, and everyone would be speaking the same language for brokerage. So this is very powerful. Not only who am I, what is my area of law that I'm working in? Uh, and then what is the service that I'm providing? Am I providing advice? Am I in litigation? Am I providing a transactional work, agreements or otherwise? Am I doing regulatory work? Um, so this is what am I doing for the client that is very important. And of course, for whom am I doing it? Who is the, what is the industry that my client is in? Uh, we are doing that. Uh, so this is a very broad, uh, very quick run through of what we have, but there are 9,500 and counting things that we're counting. And once you have all of this uh, tagged up in your data set, you can do magic. You could be able to say, here are analytics for all these things. And with that, I think I'll uh, turn it over to Kelly to talk about uh, what our membership is doing. Yes, uh, thanks, Damien. And you know, just one other point on creating a unique identifier um, that you know isn't a, a series of letters is important in the internationalization of the standard because now, if a broker is called something else in another country, or even just a, the translation of the word broker um, into another language, having that IRI allows us to preserve this is the same thing. It's just called something else in a different jurisdiction. So that's just another powerful extension of, um, of that particular data element being introduced. That's right. And as we go to different French and Spanish and otherwise, we can just add, you know, the Spanish version of this is this name. And so we can be able to normalize across that way. 
Um, all right. So it, indeed, it's been a busy year for memberships and endorsements and also collaborations for the Sally Alliance. One of the biggest endorsements that we've gotten this year is from CLOC, the Corporate Legal Operations Consortium. Um, and then we've had new members, including Bon Shonek and Kang, uh, Shepard Mullen is, is a recent addition, as well as Alas, which is the Attorney's Liability Assurance Society. Um, and we've had technology partners like NetDocs, Gavalytics, Unicort, um, and even uh, UNLV, William S. Boyd School of Law um, is a new member. So we've really seen this momentum continue to build and it's in part because we're starting to see more reference implementations and just adoption. At Goulston and Stores, we're working with um, Intap and Big Square and Adderant and a number of technology providers to incorporate elements of LMSS 1.0, and we're really excited um, to expand that with 2.0. Um, we're also engaging with our members more. We've had uh, one entirely virtual roundtable. Um, which is an open to everyone, members and just interested parties. And we give updates on the standard and uh, allow people to ask questions, um, you know, about implementation or what's next or how to get involved. Uh, and then we had a hybrid meeting at ILTACON, which took place um, just last week, where we had some people in person and then also a virtual component. Um, and so it's just been uh, you know, another big advancement this year, I think, for the Alliance to see people really starting to talk about and engage in not just what it is, but how it works, who are you working with? Um, and I think that's a big piece of, um, of how we'll continue to gain momentum. One more thing, too, on the API side. I didn't mention the big players that were involved there. We have Thompson Reuters. We have Lexus. We have Fast Case Dr. Alarm with me, of course. We have Elevate, and we have uh, Rain and Courts, and many others working on this uh, big problem. To be, how do you communicate data? We have all the big players working on that. The, one of our goals has been to, you know, as, as we initially formed the organization, you know, every, every uh, stakeholder type had different issues or approaches or different ways of thinking, or not even had been thinking about it. So we had to Think about you know what's the best way to get them involved. So law firms have their own issues with data integrity and data standardization with all their systems. Clients don't yet didn't yet have at the time have quite the legal ops groups weren't really that in, you know focused on it. The vendors always um, focus on their own thing, and we've had to try and 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 convince them to you know why there's a benefit here and what not only for their organization but for the industry. Initially, the industry benefit was more prominent, but they're starting to realize it benefits us, right? The Thompson Reuters, the Intaps, the companies like that, we're seeing that where the, 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 the dynamic is happening internally that they're saying this is hurting our, the fact, the fact that we don't have standardization of data is hurting our business uh, growth. So that's been a, a huge, a huge driver of this. And the API is our way of making it so that they have something they can work on together that they know that they will benefit from, but also that's not going to be you know, a dead end because it's, all these companies are working together on it. That's right. And just to further that point, uh, you can imagine a large organization that acquires other large organizations. Each of those individual organizations have a different uh, uh, numeric uh, identifier for motion to dismiss. And so, uh, of course, within a large organization, you need to be able to harmonize all those things. Um, so uh, Sally, of course, is a great solution for that, even internally within the company that you acquired. OK, all of our internal companies are called motions to dismiss X. Uh, and then, of course, that has a side benefit. Now that I've named that motion to dismiss as X, I can be able to say clients, if you are looking for motion to dismiss, uh, use this query on the API for that same thing. So the, it benefits everyone, both internally and uh, for intra-company communication. Absolutely. Just just one question, well, a few questions. Uh, first one is on the client side, I mean, as with many things in the legal market, it's the buyers often that drive things, even if things start to happen on the periphery, the, the, you know, the real big change comes when the, the large buyers come in. Uh, have the large corporates, the Fortune 500 type companies, have they got behind this? Are they interested? Yes, um, not yet to the numbers we want, um, but the, some of the key players listed on our website uh, include Microsoft. They've been involved for quite some time. Um, Shell has been involved for quite some time. A couple, So those are kind of example companies. Uh, really what we see though is that, you know, they I think ultimately they will benefit from the firms helping guide them along here. Mm. Uh, the, the major um, kind of touch point where this data is most obviously shared between clients and firms is in pitching, right? Because right now pitching happens in a way that's so inefficient. It's, it's, it's spreadsheets, it's, you know, data redesign and data remodeling. Um, and I think that over time, uh, as we, as, as we make the data more, more generalized that that will, 
be seen as a benefit um, for just how we uh, engage in work. And then down the road, after a matter is open, budgeting, project managing, all those things use the same data. So all these things that for clients are trying to do, uh, they should realize that's more efficient with the data is more, you know, more, more common and more easily uh, digested. And well, to and further, you, go ahead, oh, after you. Um, you know, and if you think about the number of firms that have stood up, you know, extranets and dashboards for their clients to allow them to monitor the, the volume and status of the work that they're doing, if all of the client's law firms are calling matters the same thing, and all of the technology companies are calling these matters the same thing, then all of the barriers to uniting the data of all of the law firms really crumble. Um, and so there's, there's just a tremendous untapped to this point benefit that will come as we continue to see um, the LMSS available out of the box with some of the core legal technology um, service providers. That's exactly right. And when you, uh, for the pitching side, you can imagine uh, the client say, show me your experience in this, these areas. Um, that's what Sally is, is these areas in this jurisdiction, drafting these types of documents uh, for in this, uh, before this judge, these are all things that Sally counts. Um, so uh, yeah, not only uh, being able to do your work better, but to be able to demonstrate your experience better as far as why you are the best provider for this, uh, for this particular task. Interesting. And I guess also on the buyer side as well, the, the ability to normalize and benchmark pricing, because I mean, you know, it's an interesting subject in that, you know, let's say a large corporate goes through all of its past bills, and you know, it's, you know a subject that's often talked about at legal tech shows. Uh, the problem is, of course, even if they sort out and rationalize their bills, they've got bills from maybe a thousand different law firms, if it's a very large corporate. Um, and everyone's using different systems. And even if they do rationalize it, they can't really compare their data with another company's data that might be in the same sector. And there's no competition issue. It's just sensible to compare notes. But they can't even do that, can they? So I mean, is, will this help to address that? That was the initial driver use case for Sally. It really was. I mean, that it came out of the P3 group, which is pricing, project management, and pro process improvement. And, you know, the, the frustration with, you know, how to do the apples to apples comparison. And then we get into the task code issue in UTBMS. LMSS1 really addressed the top level, meaning just bucketing matters. You know, this is patent lit, this is M&A, &A, but, but didn't get into the depth of the work, you know, uh, and let the depositions and the discovery and, and or M&A, the, 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 you know, the term sheet and so forth. So that kind of thing, that is what LMSS2 is starting to um, tackle. And that'll make that pricing um, function much more, uh, uh, you know, viable because, um, again, there's no standard for that data either, that kind of that, that depth. Um, so that's what we're trying to, we're trying to marry the business and the practice of law use cases here. No, absolutely. Um, it, I, I just, I mean, just, I mean, this is sort of slightly left field, but perhaps, perhaps it is a sensible question. I mean, what about organizations like the ABA, the local bars, you know, the, the bar of New York, California bar, I mean, they have tremendous power, I guess, to some degree. Uh, is, are you engaging with them? And do you see maybe, you know, five, 10, 20 years from now, you know, the ABA, among, along with its model rules will be, well, of course you're using Sally. Um, well, so a ACC was a, um, an organization we tried, we worked with a few years ago, um, haven't uh, much of late. It, I'd really say that those organizations don't have the leadership that um, is interested. The, the ABA did for a while, there was a project for task code redesign that the ABA ran a couple years ago, but the leadership changes so much and there's, you know, kind of constituencies and little, and, and you know, um, um, you know, kind of cells of interest. It's hard to get organizational buy-in like that for us, especially because we're not full-time. So, you know, we, you know, we try to put our attention on where we think the most immediate response will be. Uh, and, and, and that's probably not going to be one of them. Um, so, anyway, uh, and, I, and I would say, I would say the two that, uh, that large organizations, uh, like Jim just mentioned are generally, when you think of waterfall approach versus agile approaches, uh, waterfall is let's think, you know, let's spend three years studying the problem and then figure out what the solution is at the end of those three years. Um, that's waterfall. Um, Sally's a very agile. Uh, where we are figuring out what can we do the most good uh, for the lowest amount of effort today. And then we'll, uh, tomorrow we'll build upon that and the next day we'll build upon that. So we're uh, not waterfall three years into it, but we're very agile and we're addressing the needs that happen right now. Gosh, gotcha. I mean, I mean, I guess intrinsically what you're saying is that, you know, the industry is going to figure this out for itself. You know, we, we don't need some kind of 
you know, top down regulation to fix it for us. We'll do it ourselves kind of thing. Right. That's because right. This data resides in, um, in law firm. A lot of it resides in law firm, um, financial systems. The vendors, software vendors have it in their products as a the taxonomy that they offer off the shelf. So, you know, those are really where this data lives, you know, and clients have their own manner, management systems as well. So um, there's no real uh, government body or any outside organization that needs to be supportive. It's really about these constituencies that use this data and collect it and, and manage it. So, um, and it, it, but it drives so many use cases. I mean, not just pricing and project management, but document management, knowledge management, uh, yep. personnel, all kinds of things and, and experience. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's it's what so widespread. I also want to mention LMSS 2.0 <clears throat> is LMSS 1.0 was really about what we do now. LMSS 2.0 is what we think the future should hold in terms of the data we collect. We're trying to uh, offer the things that people should be looking at that will help the use cases and the the projects and the software that they use now. But maybe it doesn't have that we don't have the data for. And we know that AI will support a lot of that. It's not going to be about manual you know collection for all those things, all those nodes we've shown you. That's right. And to that end, uh, you know, there's only so many ways you can express a motion to dismiss, right? Motion with intuitive dismiss, which is a Sally node. So you can imagine, uh, you know, many of our listeners might be thinking, gosh, you know, having a human tag these things up would be really hard. Um, but having a machine say, uh, show me all the motion with intuitive dismiss and then throw the motion to dismiss tag on there. Um, that's, uh, you know, thankfully, lawyers are creative in many ways, but they're not creative in the way they name things, uh, which makes Legal machines documents. easier to tag are so repetitive. <laughs> I don't think people really realize how repetitive they are. And it's just, it's just be a gold mine in, in many, many practice areas and documents. One, one stumbling block for us is, is confidentiality, right? So, you know, with people talk about, um, why don't we have better ways of doing you know, task coding and, and budgeting all that? Because the data is confidential and, and, and that you can't just share it and use it and mm -hmm. test on it, run it with, you know, you have to, that's why, that's why there's slow uptake and all these things. You have to, the, the source data is very, very, private right so you know, it, that's one of our that's one of the issues that we're seeing and and why we probably don't have as much rapid change in the industry as we want with these products yeah yeah well and it's very similar to the challenges of developing natural language processing because you know you need a good population of documents and who's mm -hmm. going to provide those for you so it's taken years for companies mm -hmm. to get up to speed on that understandably but just just moving slightly beyond that uh, i mean this is the u.s based project but you know it's fantastic it's the biggest legal market in the world which makes total sense but for, for people in other markets like the uk which is the second largest market in places like germany or australia canada etc can, can they join in and will will this translate to their world because obviously the english system is going to be yes the u.s system and so in many ways uh, yeah we we've had we have had engagement with um individuals and organizations around the world for many years hmm. Um, interest and in both UK, kind of Europe, Asia, Australia. We have members, you know, from those places. So um, the, the the standard was built with that. It was not U.S. centric in the sense of the content. Uh, what we've seen is that we have heard of implementations in the UK and continental Europe using LMSS 1.0 um, and having it work. Uh, so the reason for that was we made it generic in terms of the labeling and the content. It was not focused on you know, U.S. laws or regulations. What we do need, though, is we do need some modifications to it for those jurisdictions. But we're seeing that the core content is very is very transferable. Um, so uh, there and there have been groups that have come to us saying we want to help you on. So for, I should say Canada already has one. We have a Canada area of law uh, modification that we're going to release in 2.0. Um, and UK has said many people come to us say yes, we'd like to help you. We're trying to get that moving, um, but it's taken some time. It's a matter of finding the right people to lead it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. at the end of the day, yes, there is. And actually in, in, in service now in, in, in Europe is apparently using us. And I've, I've got contacts that tell me that they've implemented there. So um, and, and so anyway, there's little anecdotes like that. But at the end of the day, yes, we need more participation from individuals around the world to help us make modifications uh, to the standard that if Need, they need for the jurisdiction. That's and a good example of that modification is uh, in the UK, uh, there was a group that's implementing it for real estate. And they said, oh, great, you have restaurants uh, in there. Uh, yes. But uh, Sally did not have public house, which is not something we have in the United yeah. States. But of course, yeah. uh, you know, I learned that a public house is a pub in the, uh, in the UK. Um, so in this way, it's extensible. So all they did was add an additional node to it uh, under restaurants that public house is a type of restaurant. Um, so those are the kind of around the edges things that each yes. jurisdiction can have. But there's really, um, it's we built it in a very general way that it would apply to almost all jurisdictions. 
Fantastic. And in terms of funding, I mean, you know, um, in case people are listening, I mean, you know, do you need additional funding? Is that something that would be useful if there are people watching this who say, I'd like to support this? Uh, or, or or do you just have members and members pay us, a, a, you know, a membership fee? I don't know how, how it works. Kelly, you want to? Yeah, so um, we do have we do have membership um, for, uh, you know, clients, for law firms, and for service providers, and the, the membership rates are, are on the website. We actually just reduced them by 50%, um, you know, because we've been able to run the organization, you know, on the, the power of volunteers, um, and, and to keep costs low. So what we're really looking for right now is engagement, and we would love as many members and endorsers and, um, and, and people who are ready to implement and you know, help us extend it. That's really what we're most interested in, um, as opposed to just straight funds. Gotcha. And and in terms of people, you know, people are watching. You know, maybe in the US as well. Um, the, who are the kinds of people you're looking for? You're looking for CIOs and KM heads. Uh, I mean, presumably you don't want just like everybody. You don't want to. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you do want literally everybody. I, I don't know. What, who, who I, I think we're them? I think we're applicable to both those people, CIO, uh, KM, also pricing folks. Uh, Toby Brown is uh, the head of Sally, and he's of course uh, does a lot of things with the Legal Value Network. Uh, pricing is really huge. Um, you know, of course, anyone who works with uh, you know substantive areas of law is also important. We're tagging up substantive areas, uh, and uh, so and anyway, so I, I think Sally, I think of it as the DNA of the law that we're mapping the the genome of the law, and so really anyone even peripherally involved with the law should have an interest in Sally. Okay. Yeah, I think if, if there are people who are heading up specifically firm data management um, and just the, the firm's taxonomies in general, sometimes those people um, have a CAM role or an innovation role um, or an IT role. I, I think wherever, you know, that sort of priority and, and function is, is um, which can vary by organization, but those are the types of people. I mean, you know, Jim and Damien and I are, are all very different, you know, in our day jobs, but we have this, this common interest. Fantastic. And just, just the last thing, just to wrap up, I mean, how important is Sally? I mean, personally, I, I, I clearly uh, am a big supporter of it, but for people who are perhaps on the fence, who might be saying, oh, it sounds a bit complicated or, and of course, you'll always have the, the, uh, the cynics who are like, oh, it'll never catch on. I mean, maybe you could just express a little bit about how important this is and why it's so necessary. The reason is it's important is because the industry is starving for the common data language to uh, do make better decisions and make business happen more effectively and productively and efficiently and, and all those things. And all the software you see being developed, we hear about is great software people want to use. The core data is not going to support it for the ways that they want to use it. And that's my opinion. I, th I think that the reason is because of this topic. Uh, um, we, need, we need very common language to identify legal work. And from there, the sky's the limit, in my opinion. And I, I also agree. And I would say that, you know, the question of what it takes to be Sally compliant, people might look at this and say, you have 9,500 tags, I could never do all of the things. Uh, and I, the response to that is, if you have one tag of those 9,000 that has the identifier for motion to X, and that's you only implement one, you're Sally compliant. If you implement all 9,500, you're also Sally compliant. So you can go as shallowly or as deeply as you want uh, without fear of saying, uh, you know, I, I can throwing up your hands, uh, pick one or two or five and go from there. Fantastic. And last word to Kelly. Um, I, you know, I feel like Damien and Jim um, really expressed it. I just think this is where the interest, the industry is going. And, um, you know, I, I think if now is the time to, to be part of it, if you want to have your fingerprints on it. Fantastic. Thank you to all of you and good luck with everything. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Thanks.